Mission Impossible 2 movie review. When a deadly new virus called Chimera and the only known antidote, the name of which escapes me at the moment, are stolen, Ethan Hunt is ordered to assemble a team in order to get them back. The first team member and the only one which is set in stone is a professional thief that he doesn't know personally. And right after recruiting her, they fall in love, I guess? They have sex, at least. I I don't know exactly why. I guess they just, you know, they, they really click on the fact that, you know, they, they share the personality trait of being a risk-taking dumbass. Yeah, that, that really must be it. So they, you know, right after they've consummated, they find out that she has to go undercover with her ex-boyfriend. Yeah, bad timing, but I guess, you know, they, for one thing, they really didn't leave the briefing team any time to explain, because they did jump in the sack immediately at the very first chance they got. And one also really has to wonder why Ethan is quite that unprofessional, you know, sleeping with someone he's just recruited for a dangerous and important mission. Yeah. Anyway, Luther Stickle returns and the, you know, and they've given him a personality trait that I'm not entirely sure he had in the first one. He's kind of into fancy clothes. I don't know, I guess it works okay with how he was in the first one. And we have the fourth one, Billy something, who is present and flies a chopper. Yeah, remember how in the first one, everyone Ethan came into contact with had, you know, some personality, you know, and basically everyone, you had that whole, you know, who can you trust kind of thing. Yeah, that's gone here. And we have this, you know, team member who's just... He has no character. He's he's there, and you know he he does stuff, sure, but you know it, it could have been anyone really. So anyway, the thief of you know the virus and antivirus is a former spy, though he really doesn't show it much at all, and he's kind of a moron. The yeah, I guess that just about covers the plot, so I will move ahead into... I'll start with the few good elements of this film, because after that I'm gonna give it a bit of a reaming, and in case you just want to know if this movie is for you, I can understand why you'd watch it just for the good elements, because the good, good elements are... This is a John Woo action flick. It looks good, and the action is, you know, pretty great. It's, you know, well choreographed, the, you know, he has, yeah, it's, it's John Woo action, and that in itself is a lot of fun, and, you know, I can understand watching a movie just for that, and hey, you know, as far as his, you know, since he came to America, he's made one good movie. This one isn't it. It's Face Off. If you didn't already know. But, this one is the one with the best action, pretty much, of his, other than Face Off, since he came to America. So, yeah, you know, if you want to watch it for that, go ahead. And that pretty well covers it for the positive elements, and the positive elements are, you know, kind of at odds with the rest of the movie. It's not like this is the one element that works, it's just that this is the one element that is 
clearly from a different movie and was just transplanted here. Or rather, what's actually the case is that everything else was built up around the action scenes that John Woo wanted to shoot. And that's really not a good way to craft a good story, to just have, you know, that in place. Well, this is what I want to see, you know, yeah. So, basically, one of the big problems is just the emotional core of the movie. You know, the, the, don't get me wrong, it can be exciting, it can be fun, it can even be intense, but basically there's not that much to really, you know, grasp onto and care about in this movie. You know, in the first movie there was, you know, the first movie had a reason to exist. It was an interesting concept. And, you know, it actually is a pretty good spy thriller, you know, with a real classic sort of feel to it. It really didn't need a sequel, but if one had to be made, it could have been a heck of a lot better than this. And a heck of a lot more fitting. But I'll get to that. The emotional core is supposed to be the relationship between Hunt and and the thief, Naya, I think her name is. Fanny Newton, looking hot. And it's just not there. The, the, where's the... Where's the reason for these two to be together? They knew each other for a couple of hours, almost got each other killed, and they jump into bed together. And that's supposed to be it, you know, their relationship doesn't actually develop beyond that point. That's when she goes undercover. And we're just supposed to see this great future relationship between them that, you know, we want to maintain. It's almost like a fairy tale or something. You know, it's just, well, they're pretty and they're the male and female lead, so obviously they have to end up together. You know, and that's that on itself is supposed to be what we care about, you know. Again, Compare that to the first movie. That has a real, you know, genuine, compelling situation, you know, and Hunt is a more likable character in that, and more of a spy, but yeah. That's one of the real big problems. Another is, like I've hinted at, this one really doesn't need to be a spy film. It, it really didn't need to be a Mission Impossible film at all, because it's basically a generic action thriller, you know, aided by the, you know, impressive direction and visuals of John Woo. But that's it. You know, basically, bad guy steals, you know, dangerous thing to kill lots of people, good guy comes in to save people. Things go kablam, you know, that's, yeah. By the way, remember how in the first movie, one of the few real gadgets, which are all over this movie, by the way, and getting more and more, you know, impossible to believe in any kind of credible world. Yeah, the, one of the few gadgets that Hunt had in the first movie was this, you know, thing that could cause explosions and he used it really cleverly. I guess John Woo just replayed the, you know, that part of the first movie over and over and said, you know, hey, that's what I like. So, you know, in this movie, he causes explosions constantly because he's a spy, and I guess that's what spies do. Over the course of the film, it gets less and less credible that they can actually cover this stuff up at all. You know, it gets really ridiculous with that. And... Again, it really did not at all need the spy elements. You know, for the first half or so of the film, it actually does include spy elements. Heck, there are situations where it's actually downright interesting, you know. But then for the second half, they completely throw that out the window and just 
go with what the film really is and really wants to be, you know, it's like the, you know, the dog gets out of its leash and just runs wild. It becomes an action flick, and you can just tell this is what it always, you know, wanted to be and what it was always intended as. And everything that came before, you know, it actually even has to shoehorn in being a spy film. There are several situations where it really just doesn't make sense that they, you know, take the approach that they do, but they want to stay, you know, stay pretty close to the formula of the first one, and I guess maybe somewhat to the formula of the series, but again, I don't know a lot about that. I haven't watched very much of the original 60s series. But yeah, so, you know, we have these this handful of agents that have to solve the situation where there are actually situations where you're just thinking, why don't they send in, you know, like a you know, black ops armed team and just deal with it like that? That would make a lot more sense. But yeah. The characters are just not very interesting at all. You know, there are genuine... There are things that just come out of nowhere. You know, the... I'd say it's, it's especially obvious with Naya's character. I have no idea why she does half the crap she does. It just... Yeah, suddenly they needed her character to do something specific and she does it. And... Yeah. I don't know, it just, you know, they had written themselves into a corner, I guess. Yeah, I guess that pretty well covers it for what I can say without giving away any spoilers, so, yeah. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.